Hello YouTube. Alright, today uh, I have a ViewSonic E90 CRT monitor that I got from a good friend of mine, Millbud. I also got this ViewSonic E50, which is in perfect brand new shape. This one needs work. As you can see, I have the back open. And before I say this, if you have n if you don't know what you're doing in a CRT, do not open it because there are voltages in here that will kill you. It's not just a possibility; they will kill you. Their voltages, these tubes require a lot of voltage up to. I think I read somewhere. Twenty, it's either twenty kilovolts or twenty thousand kilovolts, something like that. But here's what the inside of a CRT looks like. This is a 2004 CRT, so all the components are pretty new. Very small capacitors. There's the back of the tube right there and its little circuit board. Here's the tube itself, and you'll never guess who makes the tube. Samsung makes this tube. Very good tube. See, it looks like the inside of an old TV, basically except that the components are much smaller and this thing this monitor is a little bit blurry so what I need to do is turn it on while it's open and check out and uh, adjust these controls on the flyback right there to see what they'll do now the one in the middle there is focus which is the one I'm focused on which is the one I want to do but there's also uh, there's supposed to be one on here for brightness which I'm going to do as well. Now they were smart and they made these uh, flyback controls plastic. So yeah, it shouldn't be too much of a uh, a risk because this wire's covered, that wire's covered. It should be all right. I mean, this look at all the ferrite chokes in here, <laughs> and yet it still gives off a ton of ESR because you know it's a big old CRT. But these big old CRTs, the reason I got the CRT is because uh, a lot of times LCD monitors have a lot of motion blur in video games and that bothers me. CRTs, you don't get that motion blur unless it's an artifact of the game or the refresh rate of the monitor. You, can ha you have a lot of control of the picture with a CRT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and we're going to adjust it. So what you have to do to if you have a blurry monitor I'm still saying do this at your own risk, but you can open it up and look for a flyback. The flyback, now the flyback in these is a transformer. So that's the flyback right there. And, uh, yeah. Let me go get a light so you can see it better. And these are the controls. What they look like. They basically they're a little bit they're a little screw terminals. You can use either flathead. One of them is focus, and one of them is like uh, one of them is labeled one, and I don't know what that does. But we'll find out. My guess is this tube has had a lot of use, so it's just getting weak over time, and that's when you have to adjust the flyback. So I'm gonna plug this in, and we're gonna adjust it and see how. It See how good I can make it look. Okay, I've got the VGA cable plugged into the computer. This monitor is also plugged in, so I'll be able to, you know, compare sharpness with this one with that one as well. This one will this one I don't think will need adjusting for at least another five years or so, but this one will. This one I might have to replace the tube in at some point. Although I'm gonna have to learn how to discharge a CRT to do that. Because these CRTs stay charged for months at a time after you unplug them. The capacitor thing about these is they have capacitors in them, and the capacitors hold charges. This is by far the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my life, so don't take it lightly. Thing is now plugged in. Let's turn on the monitor. God, that scares me. <laughs> The thing crackles. <laughs> These things are scary when they're open. But even though it's the same sound you hear every time you turn one on. Well, I think that is a static electricity, but I cannot be too sure. 
So let's turn on the computer, boot into Windows. Here it goes. We should see a boot menu soon. Yeah, there we go. Gigabyte. Now it looks pretty sharp here, but once I get into Windows and at its proper resolution, you'll see that it ain't quite what it should be. Now this thing is supposed to do 1024, or not 1024, uh, 1280 by 1024, perfectly sharp, but it doesn't. So I'm going to adjust the resolution to that, and we're going to adjust the flyback that way. As you can see, that monitor has nothing on it yet. Now that monitor starts up, and we have uh, my login stuff here, so let's log in. Then you should start to see something on both monitors. There you go. It looks pretty clear on the screen, but in reality, it's not that clear. Not as clear as I wanted, anyway. And the two hasn't warmed up all the way, so of course you see all this crap down here. And as you can see, it looks a little washed out. I've had to bring the contrast and stuff up quite a bit. The brightness, it doesn't look right to me. I mean, it looks washed out. And I think that's just because this tube is getting old. It's not that old, though. It's under 10 years old. It should be fine. So what I'm, we're going to do is adjust the flyback and see what happens. Now, I'm not going to do this on camera because I, want, I don't want to kill myself. <laughs> All right, I succeeded in adjusting the flyback without killing myself. Well, the picture is drastically better. Look how sharp that is. That's awesome. That's very, very sharp. Yes, that's nice. That's very nice. Now this monitor is very much usable. See, when your tube starts to get old, you got to recalibrate it. And that's what you do. You got to go in here and adjust the flyback. And that's what I just did. Oh, that's awesome. This monitor is freaking awesome now. <laughs> See, that's all you have to do sometimes, is just turn some little knobs in here, and then you have a better picture. Very, very, very easy repair. And one thing I did, I also noticed on the top of this uh, board on the tube, there's actually adjustments for uh, what looks like... Uh, the actual electron guns and which angle they fire. So if uh, you have ghosting or something, you can adjust what's in those terminals right there. But this monitor looks amazingly better now. Wow, that's nice. Very, very sharp and clear picture. And that's the advantage of analog and CRTs. You can change the picture. You can adjust the picture. You have so much control. You have control over the electron guns. You have control over the flyback and the focus. It's great. Absolutely great. I'm kind of proud of myself for that one. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my life. Was open up a CRT and mess with it. So, there's a success story for you. If you, if you want to do this, by all means, go ahead if you want to save a CRT. Just be extremely, extremely careful. And may I suggest buying insulated screwdrivers if you're very clumsy with your hands when adjusting this stuff. Insulated screwdrivers actually have dielectric metal in them, so it will absorb up to about a thousand volts of electricity. But there's much more than that in here. So it won't save you if you do hit something, but it will give you a better sense of security. But there you go. Flyback adjusted. Let's uh, put this monitor back on my desk and uh, have at it. So let's shut Windows down and have at it. Oh, that just looks so good now. I'm so glad I decided to just take the risk and open it. It's beautiful, beautiful picture. And the monitor's now off.
Well, almost. <laughs> there it goes. Shut it completely off. Let the thing stop crackling. Which I guess is discharge or something like that. I, I think that's the tube. I think that's the electron guns. Uh, I think what that crackling comes from is the actual electron guns. I don't know for sure, but I think that's what it comes from. It, just, it sounds like a TV. <laughs> so let's unplug that. Ugh. Oh. And I'll put the back back on. Once I figure out how to, uh, yeah. I should probably unplug that. There we go. And the thing to watch out for is sometimes they have terminals like this that are just soldered like that. Look at all the flux they put on there. Jeez. But yeah, now this monitor is branded as good as new. I'm very happy. I'll get the backpack on, put it on my desk, and there you have it. Okay, I got the VGA cable plugged in and everything, and both these monitors hooked up. Let's give her a go. Computer. Here she goes. <laughs> Ah, that's nice and sharp. Yes, that's beautiful. And uh, let's boot into Windows. One thing I'm questioning is why nothing's on the second monitor. Maybe I need to detect them again. We'll find out. As Windows crunches away at that Hitachi hard drive. Oh, there it goes. The other monitor turned on as well. Okay. Let us log in. And stuff and junk and... Yeah. And we have both desktops on. And it is very, very sharp. And the picture is extremely sharp now. That's nice. This is the only thing that worries me is there's like warbly, warbly sometimes. Now, one thing you got to do after adjusting the flyback and the brightness is recalibrate your gamma. So, go to screen resolution. In Windows 7, that is. Uh, go to advanced. This is my main display. I need to change it to its uh, full resolution, actually. Which is 1080 by, uh, or 1280 by 1024. Yeah, the refresh rate definitely changed, as you can see. I'm going to put it at 85 hertz and see what happens. Damn! <laughs> 85 hertz looks really good on these monitors, too. So we'll wait for it to change back. And then I'll put it at 60 hertz, because 60 hertz it has the sharpest picture on this, on this particular monitor for some reason. I'll hide ones that it can't display. I'll do 60 hertz now. That's very nice. That's very sharp. Okay. We got 60 hertz. There we go. Now it's the same resolution as my old monitor. And it, and since it's at 60 hertz, it'll actually be nice to my camera. Anyhow, to recalibrate your monitor, go to screen resolution. Right click on the desktop and go to screen resolution, Windows 7. Let me uh, focus here. That's better. Go to advanced settings in here once you have your resolution at the recommended. Go to color management, I think. Where the hell is it? Uh, 
go to color management, go to the advanced tab, and then go to calibrate display. I'm going to turn the speakers on. Okay. Then you just go through this wizard, and then good to go.